Good morning, 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 good morning. No, I don't drink coffee. You guys know that. Uh, hi, welcome again to Saturday Morning Cartoons, Saturday, 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 along with my uh, lovely and fantastic and shut up you. Uh, oh, I'm hearing it come through somebody else's phone. Oh, let's see. Along with my lovely co-host, I'm sorry for being distracted here. Um, my name is Mark, and you see here Rose and Jerome. And uh, this is Saturday Morning Cartoons, and we're waiting for our cartoon crew to pop up, grab their cereal and milk, and lay down in front of their laptops. Uh, speaking of laptop, Jerome, I understand you have a new laptop? Yes, well, actually, it's an old laptop, but the software got fixed, and you know, unfortunately, I fixed one thing, and what happens? I'm working on a new headset of headphones because the old ones died too. So, so, so it's you one thing after another. So you fixed the laptop yourself? No, I had to upgrade software, and then um, we had to figure out why the camera wasn't working. Oh. Important safety note: look for stickers over the lens. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I guess that, you know, the little, uh, mine is a blue dot. I don't know. And it's right in the frame mm -hmm. on a 17 inch uh, laptop. And right in the frame, there's, of course, that's where my camera is. And when that blue dot is on, I know uh, the camera is working. Um, good morning, everybody. It's really good. If you guys can go ahead and start your watch parties uh, uh, as soon as you can. Still, uh, oh, you know what? You started your watch party. I did, and I should have hit mute before I started it, but it, it, I did. That's I what happened with me, too. When you heard your voice, that was me. It started yeah, yeah, that's okay. it's, it's, so was that, was, that, was that a new M MBL uh, logo opening? That looks really I like cool. That. that looks sharp. My yeah. friend Garrett, I, I, because HWWS, which is our parent company, um, they have that logo, and I text from the car on the way home from work <laughs> yesterday evening. Hey, Garrett, that's really cool. Can I have something like that too for MBL? Before I hit the front door, I mean, it must have been five minutes. Wow. He sent it to me and I'm watching it on the phone while I'm driving at 85 miles an hour, like I normally do. I'm like, holy crap, that's really cool. So yes, that is our now <laughs> new kind of opening there. You know, I hate people with talent. I, I really do. <laughs> I can't do what they do. Do you guys are, you know, uh, Jerome, you fixing computers and, and and things like that, and and Rose just being a freaking housewife. I'm in this, you know, kind of uh, dog mood now where I really think I need a companion because a chicken. I, a dog I know the great. perfect dog for you. Uh-oh. There's uh -oh. one of two dogs that Mark needs. And tell me what you oh. think about this one, Rose. He either needs a Labradoodle, uh -huh. you know, as, as you know, the handbag dog. Yeah. Or Mark needs to go to the far end and get himself a Great Dane. Oh, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> I, I need a freaking... Um, Hefty bag to pick up that crap on the lawn. <laughs> no, 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 no. You just more like a pug. Yeah. Okay. There you go. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I'm it's a, a good size. They're, they're a good sized dog, and they're not too big, and they're not too small. I'm a Labrador or oh. a Spaniel kind of guy. You know, um, a retriever. You know, I'm that, I'm, the, I'm that kind of guy. Sorry, with us doing cartoons, with us doing cartoons, I keep seeing the the Warner Brothers dog show <laughs> one where they talk about, are you, you're not a Labrador retriever. You got a Labrador? When you get one, I'll retrieve it. Dog <laughs> <laughs> season, rabbit season. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, people in the watch party. I see you guys are showing up. Can, can, can I, I, can I just ask one more thing here, my my sir? Um, how did how did our CyberCon do? CyberCon was unbelievable. In fact, we there is a, uh, a, a news st channels news station did a report on it. 
uh, newspaper Orlando Weekly, Orlando Sentinel, both did reports on CyberCon. Um, it was one of the most tiring things. Of course, you know, it wasn't much tiring for me because I didn't do it 56 hours straight. Uh, hats off to Garrett and Sage and Dina and, and, and everybody, and everybody awesome. associated with that. Um, it was unbelievable. And of course, uh, I thought I was over Stan Lee. But last Sunday at three o'clock, when you know I did a little prologue before I showed uh, the clip of my panel with him at DragonCon, I was did a little behind the scenes thing of, of of something I noticed about Stan that nobody else knew about, but I told it on air, and uh, I broke up, broke down, I whatever. I thought I was okay. I'm fine. I'm you know it's been a couple years now. I'm fine. I was like, oh my god, just talking about it just broke me up. Um, but overall, it was incredible. Uh, Chris um, Bagley, how you doing, buddy? Uh, Ulrich from Germany. Uh, guten Abend. Uh, meine Deutsches is uh, still scheiße, so <laughs> bear could, with me. Could, could we say good morning to Jerry, who's out on the West Coast? You could say good morning to Jerry, who actually got up early, if he's yeah. on the West Coast. Jerry has... Jerry has been a real good friend. He's been sending me links to potential job openings out here on the East Coast. Jerry, oh, Jerry, you are the man. You are, Jerry, you are in as hot as all get out over there on the coast. Jerry, we're kind of in our 90s here too, low 90s, high 80s, low 90s. You guys, I think, had 97 degrees a couple of days ago. Yeah, I hate you people. Well, and hey, well, yeah, that's what happens when you go towards the sun. When you go towards the sun, we have actually lifted our head in the sky and opened our mouths because we know that disease will be wiped out if we just did that. In yeah, we, 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 had, we had snow last weekend and Gwen made snowmen. I, I saw that, that was so cute. Was yeah. So cute. Anyway, we went out on the beaches and we lifted our head up toward the sky and opened our mouths so that the sun can eradicate. You, 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 oh, you that's how the UV gets into you. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor and, and, and just, you know, let me know when the sun comes out up there in Mass. Guys, it is Jerome's turn today, and we're going to pay homage to something that's very, very interesting. It's a great idea on Jerome's part to do this because I do remember cartoons back during our day when they had sport segments in them. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about sports and cartoons, which is great. Um, this is all Jerome's deal on this. So uh, other than hello to everybody in the cartoon crew, people that are waking up that are watching us this morning, um, we're going to go right to Jerome. Jerome, tell us about sports in cartoon. Well, as, as we all know, um, it's all started with in the 1940s with the Looney Tunes. And when the guys came back from, from World War II, they, they wanted to share with family. And especially uh, the soldiers wanted to share with their sons and be manly and all that. And what was it that was best was sharing with sports. And the <laughs> – yes, I am a Looney Tune. Thank you. I wear that badge with honor. I'm sorry. So, my fingers My fingers. Fit. My apologies. Go ahead. So what happened over the time was – is the problem was is what do you use um, – for the basis for a lot of your cartoons. And sports are the easiest one to do. You have a team or a group or an individual who travels from place to place to play other people, other teams, and you can do stuff during the travel time, games, etc. So it was a really easy thing for people to push. Um, and due to the fact that coronavirus has basically shut down our entire sporting industry, I figured, no, we do not have it anymore. It melted. Gwen was very upset that her snowman di uh, died, as she says. Um, so so sm the sports was um, very easy for them to do, and it allowed the guys who did the cartoons to sort of fantasize a little bit on their sports aspects. So why don't we um, talk about the first one? Um, right now, this is what I'm drinking, okay? <laughs> Mark, I think, is bored. Um, Mark, um, the very first one we have, could you please run that very first clip. I think everyone will enjoy this one. It's about three minutes long. What do you get that all off? Yeah, I'm safe. I said you're out. I'm safe. You're out. I'm safe. 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 I got it, I got it, I got it! Come on now, put it over the 
Love it, love it, love it, love it. Absolutely love it. This is considered one of the best of the Bugs cartoons. Um, as a matter of fact, this one is where Bugs is at his Bugsiest. Um, at the beginning, you saw the reverse psychology happen, where it's he's safe, he's out, he's safe, he's out. This was the very first time this was used. Now, it wasn't used as successful as um, Rabbit Season and um, Duck Season later on, but this was our first usage. Also, this was the first time that Bugs actually had the villain be actually mean instead of incompetent. And so he had to deal with basically a villain. And this is one of the most popular Bugs um, ones. And because it's baseball and it happened just as the guys were coming back from Europe and the Pacific, this one really struck home with a lot of people. As a matter of fact, there are web pages that are actually analyzing this one of all the Looney Tunes and all the Bugs. This is the one that a lot of people are analyzing. Very interesting. All right, good job. All right. I love the name of the opposing team, the Gas <laughs> Gorillas. Gorillas. What's interesting is if you look at that that clip, also you can see references to World War II. Like, is this trip necessary because of rationing? Um, the tobacco was an ad. There was an actual ad that they were spoofing. Um, and then it's not the yellow cab company; it's the mellow yab cab company, and all the ads on the walls also. Um, they really had a lot of fun when they did this one. You know, awesome, so. buddy. Good job on that. Good job. Thank you. What you got um, next? Well, the next one is, um, I know that um, our host here, Mark, is a football fan. Oh, um, yeah. Good as time. a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, those who don't hear us before the show, which we might actually have to do a pre-show and a post-show show, show um, <laughs> Mark and I were having debates about football. We won't tell you what it was about, but the initials are Tom Brady, Okay. Um, and we were talking about that. So, so I, I, I was, as I was searching this, I was thinking, Mark, how does the future of football going to look? <laughs> and I think the Jetsons provided that with us. So why don't you go ahead and run that clip for me, please? <laughs> this is a better future than the knuckleheads out on the field now. Exactly. Look, you're going to have to forward it to about 11 minutes, please. Okay, my apologies. I didn't read the notes. So, you said 11 minutes? 11 minutes. That's where the football game is. Oh, I would be 
you see. Right. Awesome. Look, Jessen, here come the ringers on the field. Wow, look at the size of those. There's Gronk. And Gronk. Hey, here come the Marauders. And Gronk. And Gronk. Teams are moving out onto the field. And there's Coach O'Brien taking his place on the sidelines. O'Brien is the great exponent of scientific push-button offensive strategy. And on the other side of the field is Coach Lasky, the master of push-button defensive strategy. I see Coach O'Brien is about to pick his starting players. We'll call them off as they come onto the field. Luchet, O'Mara, Hikowski, O'Hara, Wachapowicz, Gibrowski. With these two powerhouse teams, this is bound to be a rock'em, sock'em game, folks. Ah, I see the teams are lined up for the kickoff. There's a whistle, and Coach O'Brien goes in the right. Let's see who he picks to kick off. It's O'Hara. The players start forward. Gibrowski holding. Here's the kick. It's a high water kick to about the 10-yard line. Crazy Lakes Cosmos is under the ball. Crazy Lakes is moving back. He's waiting. He's flying. And he's tackled immediately by Bronco Titanium. Wow, what a tackle. Did you see that, Jensen? <laughs> see it. I didn't even get a chance to taste it. <laughs> the Marauders are lined up defensively. The Raiders are in a huddle. wonder what Coach Lasky will think of. The opening play can be very important. Ah, he seems to have come to a decision. He brings the team out of the huddle. They've lined up over the ball. Now we'll see what Coach Lasky will try. The ball is snapped back. Watch your is taken back. He still has the ball. When is he going to pass it? He still made it back. And there it goes. It's a great chance for an interception. O'Brien's with you for the prison. It's in for the pickoff. He's a bitch to move in on him. But here comes Rick to jump fast to try and intercept. And he does. What a play. <laughs> He's running beautifully. This is where Coach O'Brien is at his best. Across the field, Coach Lasky is moving up a swipe of for the tackle. Look at that footwork. Go, go, Brimovich. There, ladies and gentlemen, is beautiful. Broken field running. There's only one man between Brimovich and the goal. It's Roger Owens. He's moving up fast. Brimovich is running his skill. Brilliant, it is. It's Roger Owens. is picking up speed. So it's Brimovich. It's Roger Owens. Brimovich. It's Roger Owens. Can't run. Yes, you can. Brimovich was a little shaken up on play. Here comes the robot trainer moving out quickly. I love the trainer. Wind knocked out him and he's being helped off the field. Oh no. <laughs> he should be as good as new by halftime, so don't worry, mother. <laughs> How far do you want me to go? Uh, this play. This is at the end of this play. Got it. 42,321. Over by R square. The cube road of A7. Hike. Come on, snap back. Uh oh, it's like a trick play. Okay, you can stop it at this okay, point. I now love tell it. me, wouldn't you watch an entire game of that? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I mean, player fees would be down. You know, only the coaches are getting paid now. You know, that's, that's you wouldn't have to worry about sports injuries. There you okay. go. Yeah, all you'd have to worry about, Rose, who had is your son played football. It was a hangnail and maybe a callus on the tips of his fingers, right? Yeah. Doesn't doesn't he get calluses now from video games? <laughs> Up. Purple tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and it's very it's very nineteen sixties um push button technology. It was it was a lot of fun. And I always remembered that and that ironically, this is what got me into football. The Jetsons? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know, to this day, I mean I keep hearing about the Statue of Liberty play. I have yet to see anybody pull it off. Okay. <laughs> But those are that was some of the stuff that was involved. Um, you know, I always loved that episode. Um, there's a lot of other things going on that I think was really good um, in that episode. But that was an interesting. That was like one of the um, football doesn't really make an appearance um, in the cartoons for a long time until until the 1980s. You have a Scooby Doo episode where um, somebody is a, uh, a football player. And he's trying to stop. They're trying to stop a ghost on a football field, but you really don't see the game. And the only thing that that memory comes to mind is Arthur and the Knights. 
which was basically a football team went back in time and became the, the King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. And that was done in the late 1990s, early uh, And it was so horrible, I couldn't even throw it here. Okay. <laughs> so, awesome, man. Good morning, Terry, over there in Ireland. Thank you, buddy, for being up and being, uh, being with us as always. Good morning, Sage. Yeah, I see Sage. Garrett's online here. Good morning, Garrett. All right, it's Saturday morning here in uh, quarantine land. Um, what you got next, buddy? Well, the next one is, um, since I was just watching things about um, car racing, we're going to deal with the very first um, car race, and that was Indiana Rock Lip. Um, in, in Indiana Rock, um, <laughs> and I can't even say it. It was the Flintstones, okay, the 500. <laughs> Yeah, and, it's and, a car race, yeah. Yeah, a car race. And then the beauty of this was, is um, again, back in the early 1960s, um, car racing was just starting to get popular. The Indianapolis 500 was the, one of the premier races. And people would watch it on TV, ABC, Y World of Sports, and everything else. So naturally, the Flintstones had to show how it was originally done. And Fred needs the money. And who were the top racers at the time? The Italians. Andretti. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So Fred enters the race as an Italian. So <laughs> Mama he needs, he needs fifty thousand dollars to build the college fund for Pebbles and he's gonna win it through the car race. So Fred did a really dynamite qualifying, they showed that and we couldn't get the clip because of something happened. But what we can't show you is how the race ends. So Mark, why don't you please run that clip? Absolutely. Oh, I thought it was going to turn too fast. I see it, but I don't believe it. He's actually driving on the side of the wall. I've never seen such a display of speed and skill. He drives like I know, like he's coming home from work on the freeway. Oh, there's a Let's get over there. Maybe Bonnie can stop Fred. I thought he was well in the lead now. He looks like a sure winner. Uh-oh, he's slowing down. The pack is making it faster. Barney, I want you to stop Fred this minute. Oh, boy. Yeah, how come you fell down at work? We were going to win first prize and surprise you girls with college funds for Bells and Bam Bam, but there's no chance now. Why not? Because Fred's wheels are chipping off. They're getting smaller and smaller, and he's going slower and slower. Look! Wiseau is trying desperately to hold on to his 10 lap lead, but his wheels are worn down to the hub. Come on, Fred! Come on! Wiseau is close to the finish line, but he's losing his lead fast. Rick Bailey is leading the pack into the final lap. It's still anybody's race. Hurry, Fred! Faster, faster! Wiseau approaching the finish line. Oh, Fred! He's stuck! He has no wheels at all! No! And here they come! Come on, Fred! If you still win! Come on, come on! Paisano crosses the finish line first! He's stopping at that point. Paisano is the winner! Hey. You did it! Fred, you did it! 50,000 dollars! Congratulations! Oh. You big, wonderful hunk of man. <laughs> love Ray. Goggles, goggles, Paisan. Goggles, 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 goggles. Goggles, goggles. Yeah. So, so what's interesting is, is in the rest of the um the rest of the episode, Fred is disqualified because he had to go over with the wheels instead of lifting the car and going, but they get the 50,000 because they get an endorsement deal for tires. <laughs> now you got, um, this is a fun episode. Um, it's one of the very first ones that deals with car racing and stuff like that. Um, I have to say this was, this was one of the episodes I really enjoyed of them. Um, this was in the fifth season of the Flintstones. So you can watch it for it on, um, on uh on me tv um yes you know it's sunday, so it, it, sunday mornings it comes on six o'clock every day i uh, to watch it so uh oh yeah um gary's yeah. uh, dishing out compliments i think he wants something uh oh uh, i'll compliment to Gar garrett for that uh good uh logo uh, animation that he did for us. uh he's saying that i still got my corona fro going 
Um, I don't know if you guys saw my comment on uh, Facebook the other day, whereas I heard a yell and then elephants responded. That's how I knew I, I really need a haircut. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. See, we're measuring like, like the rings of a tree, right? We're oh. measuring how long you've been in, in quarantine by how high your fro's getting. Yeah, you can start cutting <laughs> you know? off, yeah. And so, you're so I think it's, direction. I, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for the big afro. Yeah, you know, 1970s, well, huge. I'm, I'm looking at you, and you're going towards the center of the earth, and here I am going out of space. I think I got the better deal here. Um, no, no, no. See, it's winter time. You know, it's going to be winter time in a, in about six months. So my chin's going to be nice and warm. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, all right. Well, uh, that's great. So we saw Flintstones. Go ahead. So yes. what's that next? so then so we move forward from 1964 to 1968, and go ahead and run the clip. Everybody loves the wacky racers. One of my Favorite cartoons of all time. One of them. <laughs> Not one, but it is one of my favorite cartoons of all time. I just happen to love these guys. Meanwhile, the Slide Brothers are trying to pass the Army Surplus Special. Yourself, for the moment you're about to round on. Do the lobby. Oh, good God. This is a little thing here. Come on, baby. Just like a woman, always wants to clean up. Yeah, notice it's a couple of cylinders, the fan belt, the fan, you know. No. No. Okay, there you go. You guys know that that would never happen in real life. Yeah. Well, the funny thing, the funny thing is, if you go back to the 1960s, those cars were, those engines were incredibly easy to repair. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and so you know, people could repair would would repair them on the sides of roads all the so time. Much, so much space under that freaking hood. Oh know? yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I used to have a um a Dodge Valiant with a slant six engine that you could you know fix like nobody's business. It was so easy. I was up. Uh, I woke up early this morning, like I normally do, for some bizarre reason, one, two o'clock, and I turned on the TV. I was watching Mannix and I was watching Cannon, and the <laughs> size of those freaking cars, man, it's like holy crap! And oh, I, I miss driven, those days. And I've driven through the tiny, small streets of Germany, and I say, no way could you get a Cadillac in this neighborhood. Those are considered land barges nowadays. Yeah, they, they, were, they were incredible. So, so the beauty of the Racky races is, is there, um, for those who don't know and look on, on um, YouTube, there's an actual 15 to 20 minute documentary about the Wacky Racers. Yes. And, and, and there's a couple of web pages that talk about the Wacky Racers because like Mark, people love the Wacky Racers. And previously on one of our previous shows, we talked about this. In England, there's a hobby group that has made the damn cars. Yes. That's just incredible. I love that idea. Yeah. Um, I showed a commercial once, a live action commercial from yep. That was great. 
Yeah. yeah the wacky races. And Find that, you'll love it. And here's the other thing that I, I think Mark would appreciate this, is that if Dick Dastardly would stop trying to do them, 90% of the time he would win the race because he's always in the lead to begin with. Yeah, he's always trying to sabotage. If he just keeps going straight, just don't stop, he probably would win, you know? Yeah, yep. And um, so basically there were 12 or 13 entrants and it ran for a couple of seasons and it had not one but two spinoffs. Okay, yeah. it was it was Stop the Pigeon. Yeah. And Penelope Pitstop got her own show. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah that, and was, uh, that was uh, uh, the perils new. of Penelope Pitstop. Thank you, thank yeah. you very much, Rose. You once again have come through for us. Um, <laughs> and and what's interesting is is that they they brought it back. I think in the '90s was it that Cartoon Network did a, a version of it for a while. You can find it um, some of the episodes online. So, uh, yeah, the very first uh, car race show. So um, the next one is the premier car race show that we all grew up on. Okay. Yes, I, I agree. A hammer and a, and a uh, screwdriver was, yeah. was exactly what it needed there. Say. <laughs> Sorry, I dropped it down too quick that she had. Yeah. What would she say? She said uh, older VW bug just needed a hammer and a screwdriver. You're absolutely right. That's right. I, I, my father had a Volkswagen uh, camper. Yeah, good morning, Kevin, over there in Colorado. Pleasure to have you up here, buddy boy. Nice to see you. Really, really nice to see you. Um, all right, but this is definitely a guy's cartoon. I mean, yeah, the, the, the girls probably had the hots for this dude. Um, <laughs> Tracy was a I little bit I love this more, show. I love the show. She was a little bit more of my, my, my sister than, I mean, it was nothing to try. She had a pretty face. Nah. That, that's about as far as but, but, but she's rich. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. Uh, that's it's, always attractive. You got to own helicopter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, yeah, I don't know. But yeah. Now, I couldn't find, um, there was a couple of things I wanted to find on this one, but I couldn't really find it without actually digging down my Speed Racer collection and, and you know, um, pulling, um, Dude, pulling stuff you down. Found, you found the perfect one. I okay. So, really before we, flip. yeah, before we get into it, let me explain a couple of things. Please. The family is a family of racers, the dad is a car engineer. Right. Okay, he builds the cars, but the oldest son Rex, who later goes on to become a secret agent and known as Racer X, there's Speed, and in a, and in one episode, the annoying Spritel gets to race also. Okay, <laughs> yes, he goes to another country. They do the whole Prince and the Popper thing, and he ends up at the end being part, get to be in the race. And of course, like all members of the Speed Racer fan of the Racer family, he's in the lead. Um. So dad built the Mach 5, and I found this really cool stylized clip on explaining the controls of the this Mach 5. is awesome. I'm, I'm so excited about it if I can find it. Go ahead it. and run that if you could, please. Yes, absolutely, as soon as I get my fingers going here. Come on, fingers. Here we go. Enjoy this all the way through. These are the controls of the most powerful and amazing racing car in the world, the Mach 5. Control A releases powerful jacks to boost the car. Control B, press this button and the Mach 5 sprouts special grip tires for traction over any kind of terrain. Control C, for use when I have to race over heavily wooded terrain. Powerful rotary swords are protruded from the front of the Mach 5 to slash and cut any and all obstacles. This is control button D, which when pressed releases a powerful deflector which seals the cockpit into an air-conditioned, bullet and crash-proof and watertight chamber. E, the control for special illumination, which enables me to see much further and more clearly than with ordinary headlights. This is control F, which I use when the Mach 5 is underwater. First, the cockpit is supplied with oxygen. Then a periscope is raised to scan the surface of the water. Everything that is seen is relayed down to me by television. Control G 
G releases a homing robot from the front of the car. The homing robot can carry pictures or tape recorded messages to whomever and wherever I want to send them. The Mach 5 is the most complex and ingenious car ever built. A tribute to my father's imagination, genius, and technical skill. You have been the You know, I spent many a time in the sixth grade drawing that, that steering wheel for my own usage, okay? Uh, right. I got spinal <laughs> fever or something. You know what I was thinking, Jerome? I was thinking that homing beacon, that, yeah. that pigeon, was like one of the first prototype drones. Exactly. Now tell me, does that drone not look better than the modern ugly drones that we have today? Absolutely. I want to more stylized drones around nowadays. Button G was always my favorite button when I was watching Speed, and that was the one that controlled the drone. That was my you know, favorite button on that car. I, I do remember as a kid asking my dad when we were going to buy the Mach 5 for the family car. <laughs> right. okay? um, well, it's nice that um, we have a full-size model of it in our Dragon Con parade every year. Does it have the spinning awesome. blades to take care of crowd control? Uh, no, that's me. That's me. That's me. I'm in front of and I'm just swatting people. But um, yeah, we have a full size model that's always in the parade every year at Dragon Con, and it is absolutely. And of course, the dude dressed up as Speed Racer. So right. Well, one of the interesting things about this um, is that over the years, people who have gotten into auto um, engine, auto mechanics and and engineering of that have actually tried to figure out how to do some of the stuff that that is done. And they've figured out the, um, the, the, the jumping part of it and how to get that to work. My apologies. Yeah. And, and, and the problem they've always had was is when it's originally designed as a jack for a quick um, to raise it up real fast so you can re replace the tires. And so the question is, is if, if you're moving, how does it you know, take off? And they've worked on the, the, the materials for that. Hey. Good question by Sage. So we're going to go around the panel here and we're going to ask. She's also asking which uh, special feature would you use the most. For me, it would be the leaping one because no way would I be in traffic much longer. <laughs> I'd get pissed off and I go, <laughs> you know, I just press that damn button and I'm there you go, I'm home. How about yours, Rose? Uh, I would use the blades to cut all the traffic out of my way. Oh, look, old lady crossing street. Ah! Oh, well. <laughs> yes, use those blades, Rose. How about you, Jerome? Uh, I was going to say the sub thing, but I actually like the gripping tires because yeah. you can go up on the side of walls, and, and in one episode, he goes almost pure vertical. Right. You know, so yeah. I, could, I could drive down the highway a la the Fred Flintstone, you know, racing <laughs> home. Yeah, you know? Jerome, you, you know it's a cartoon, right? It's a cartoon. It's a cartoon. Oh. Sorry. No. Cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so it, that was it. Showed up in America. Speed Racer showed up in America in 1968. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it had been going in um, in Japan uh, a couple of years beforehand. So that's and it, it's an early anime which we discussed earlier. So not to be outdone, and as one of the first um, toy <laughs> cartoons. Um, Mattel got involved, okay? And what is, in the 1960s, the hottest little boy toy for the, in, in the 1960s? Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels. I had the little plastic track in my living room and just putting them all together. The Loop the Loop was my favorite, of course. I had the racing one, which had that little house that would spin them around the track. Oh, yeah. It would take yeah. turns, okay? Yeah. I mean, and a boy around our age had Hot Wheels. You know, oh, yeah. we, were, we were collecting the cars. The cars were really cool to collect, you know? And, and the early ones were all made out of metal. Right. Oh, my God. They hurt when you throw them out. Get out of my room, girl. <laughs> <laughs> or your, 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 your younger brother also. So go, ahead and the, so go ahead and run the clip. All right. That's, that's, do we got to watch this, really? I mean, uh, we'll just run it for a little bit. I think the cartoon sucked. Yeah, I didn't say it didn't suck. <laughs> 
Maybe I'm not showing the clip, am I? No. We just oh, you're showing us the picture. Well, I, I wanted to watch it alone anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anybody get out of my room. So, all right, let's let's let's, let's try this again. I apologize. <laughs> Maybe I'll put it up. Sorry. Shut up. Sorry, it's my coronavirus. <laughs> okay, we're, still just the, we're still just seeing the picture. Yeah, I know you are. I did that on purpose. Okay. There we go. And there's Jerome's name. I don't know why. Maybe this is it. Is this it? I know in a minute. <laughs> The lyrics are Grammy Award winning. <laughs> I have no idea how you know you, you could not come up with lyrics like that. But anyway, your fault. This, this was a um. This was a very pop. This is a, a two year long running show. Oh my god! Really? Yeah. Yeah. It ran for two years. Um. You can see the influence of Speed Racer. I hate you know. As much as Mattel may want to deny it, Speed, you can see so much of Speed Racer in there. Basically because if you watch some of the episodes, it's it's almost exactly like Speed Racer. You know, we got to go in. Somebody's trying to sabotage the race. But instead of having just one car like the Mach 5, there was all the different ones, which promoted the Hot Wheels toys. Now, lots of complaints after the first season about how this was nothing more than a car commercial, a toy commercial. Uh -huh. Okay, sure. 1960s, they still had a lot of control on from the federal communications, so they made a ma some major changes in the second season. Right. Okay, then in the late 1980s, in the mid-1980s, they made lots of changes to what, you know, about shows and what they could be, which led us to Transformers and everything else. But the 1960s were still very much... Um, uh, very tightly controlled. And Sage, when I back back in the um, 1970s, I had a cute butt in a white pair of jeans. I had a white <laughs> pair of jeans, also, just so you know. So okay. No, no, I'm I'm throwing up in my mouth right now. So you guys might want to stop. All yep. Right, so. <laughs> and Terry is absolutely right, but Terry, that was a later in the 1980s, also, and Mask was originally designed as a toy, also. Boy, okay. Yeah, I, I, that butt is so fat. I mean, flat, not fat, flat. The other guy on the other side's got a fat butt, but never mind. <laughs> so, All right, so, um, so in the 1970s and in the, 19, um, in the, in the 19, early 1970s, if you were a kid um, and you had to stay inside because of rain on Sunday, and even on, uh, I think it was Sunday, was ABC's Wide World of Sports. Yes. Okay, it wasn't just football, baseball. Man, they covered everything. And one of the ones that I always used to love watching, other than watching the Evil Knievel sections, um, I know Mark watched Evil Knievel jump over junk too. Of course. Um, was the Harlem Globetrotters. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. Sweet Georgia Brown. And this was known as the Metalock Lemon era with Curly and all the rest of them where they were the, where they were the uh, guys who wouldn't play basketball. They would just do all sorts of tricks and clown around and all that. And they were hugely popular. It was it was that pretty much the height of the Globetrotters, um, and of course they got their own TV show. First season was them traveling around in different places and solving problems with playing basketball. Later next season they got themselves a uh, superheroes. 
But if Mark, if you could play the clip and start at about five minutes and 30 seconds, I want you to see some of the basketball that they showed in the actual cartoon to solve it. Now, this one is, for some reason, they're in fairyland. I don't know what's going on. They're in a fairy tale land. They're fighting. What are they playing against? Um, they're up against gargoyles. Is that 530? Yeah, 530, please. You can start right there. That'll be fine. <laughs> did in real life they incorporated into the into the cartoon okay now what's amusing and and then and you're gonna love this one is after the success of these cartoons and their appearance on abc wide world of sports they got themselves a live variety show like everyone else was getting for <laughs> on saturday morning you had the hudson brothers and all the others and the globe trotters got this now, unfortunately, there's not a very good copy of the opening that I was able to find. Yeah. So this one's in black and white and a little fuzzy at the beginning. But why don't you go ahead and run it just to show the real live Globe Globe Trotters? Okay. Okay, you can stop it at this point. Wow, I remember. That's, that's pretty cool. I yeah. remember every single one of those members. It's, it's incredible. My, you know, they right? were memorable. Yeah. And 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 they, like I said, the Globe Trotters. Um, once they stopped going on AB, on Wide World of Sports, they pretty much, you know, they didn't fall off the face of the earth. People still watch them. Still, people still go to see them. But that time frame just had something special with the Globe Trotters. You know, the seven, uh, you know, I miss the seven. <laughs> don't we all? You know, I don't know. How do you look in bell bottoms? Uh, I was awesome, dude. Come on. <laughs> and, 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 and the seersucker suits that, you know, like, you know, uh, that's, that's real back. That's, <laughs> 40s, I think, but I'm not sure. But go ahead. But anyway, so the Globetrotters show um, was basketball, and the Globetrotters appeared in three episodes of the Scooby Doo uh, Mysteries. Cool. So uh, the Globetrotters were everywhere, and they were on a Gilligan's Island movie. Yes. Oh, yes, I remember, I remember that. Okay. So, like I said, the Globetrotters uh, for Saturday morning for stuff were really a powerhouse in the 70s that people kind of have forgotten about since then. Okay. All right. So, what happens every four years, guys? 
The Olympics. The Olympics, except for this year that's going on to next year. But so um in, in, in with the Olympics and everything and the way that they um, did really well in 1977, and actually if we go back to 75 and 76, what was the top TV show in the summertime on ABC? The Laugh Olympics? No. No? Battle of the Network Stars. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah, yes. that's right. I love that. Okay. Yeah. It started off as a, um, as a clip on um, Wide World of Sports and then became its own show called Superstars where athletes from other um, sports would compete in other types of athletic endeavors, okay. rowing, basketball, and other things. And then they decided the ratings weren't there, and they started to bring in the actors. And then they started doing silly stuff and everything else. And, and what happened is, is it was a huge, huge rating hit. Okay? Um, you can find them online. I recommend you watch it. And if you're into 1970s cheese this is it, okay? So, Saturday morning cartoons can't be left behind, so we bring the Laugh Olympics. So why don't you go ahead and run the first clip? He's sort of struggling. Yeah, I know, he's struggling with the technology today. Have a civilarity. This is it, sports fans. Participants, even. Television's greatest array of stars. Laugh Olympics. Presents the world. 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 Welcome, sports fans, to the All-Star Okay, that was okay. Hey, yep, I there think you it go. was a brilliant, a brilliant concept, in my opinion. Yes. Well, it was very similar to the Wacky Racers. Yeah. Okay? You had all these different, and it wasn't just Olympic-style events happening. They would incorporate and create all these weird competitions and all that, and sometimes some one team would win or another. Personally, I was always rooting for the really rottens. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, now we have another clip to actually show um, what was going one of the one of the events, and it's a downhill ski one. So if you could run that, please, Mark. Stand by. Get up here on the screen. All these buttons I have to press. Be one simple. All right. So so the walk. Yeah. yeah. It got it got silly with some of it, and this and it started off by the way it's called the All um, Scoop. What does it start off as Scooby's All Star Laugh Olympics? Welcome, sports fans, to the All Star Laugh Olympics. First, we'll take you to the awe-inspiring Matterhorn, high in the Swiss Alps. Then around the world to magnificent Tokyo, Japan, for the lineup of today's exciting contests. <laughs> Now, to the Swiss Alps, where the Yogi Dahoo is, and the really runs will compete in the first event, a downhill speed contest, a race against the clock. And now, down to our all-seeking announcers, Nebulus and Bill Dewar. Who is for sure? There'll be no further given. Run, Bill that are all Here's how the story works. The winner gets 25 points. The second place team will receive 15. And the third place receives 10. Now, back to Snagglehood. Suffer us alums. What is this? Trick or treat? Comfortable on the way down. And there he goes. That's not a bad idea. Yes, it's the captain of the Scooby Doobies himself. Scooby Dooby Doo. And now, ready for the takeoff, are some really rotten. Five of them, even. 
<laughs> a reloaded <laughs> team. And we used to use every low-down scurrilous, mean, cheating, rat thing trick to win. What he said? Oh, my name's not Dinky Dalton. And here's Scooby Doo in a remarkable display of speed and agility. A real hot So as you can see, it gets silly real fast. Man, but I miss cartoons. Even in the silliness, man, I miss cartoons. It takes a lot of skill to saw skis while you're skiing. No, no. It takes even more skill to ski down at that speed while sitting in an easy chair reading the newspaper, okay? <laughs> that would be me. That would be me. That is all me. I mean, I, I think that's perfect. Yeah, didn't have a flat screen, but that's okay. I don't think they were invented then, so that's fine. <laughs> what was interesting, though, is, is that this was really popular. Laugh Olympics was really popular, and it did a sort of spinoff of Yogi's Space Race, oh, um, which is a combination of the Wacky Racers and the, and the Laugh Olympics. Yeah, I forgot about Yogi's Space Race. Right. I didn't, I didn't grab a, um, a, um, a clip on that since we'd already done a lot of um, car races. Sure, um, on this. Sure. Now. The funny thing about this is that um, these were all from their network. It wasn't from um, other networks, but you'll notice that some of them, like Yogi, Huckleberry, are ones that came back out in the 1950s and 60s, so the rights were kind of in questions, and so Hanna-Barbera, since they owned all of these, could put them all over the place, and the networks didn't own the actual characters, so that's why it would appear that some characters from now, some networks would be on Laugh Olympics and all that. Okay, so that's why that's why that you were able to get the wide variety of characters. Hanna Barbera owned the characters, not the networks, like unlike today. Okay. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, so that's why you were able to do this. Okay, so we're coming up on the end of the hour, and um, I know it seems like we're kind of a short show today, but no, um, absolutely. not at all. No. All right. Fine. So I have two clips. One is a really quick one, and one is a, a longer one, and we have to run the entire longer one. That's but fine. Um, sports continues to be a um, continued to be a Saturday morning thing. Um, like I said, there was a football one where the football team went on to become the Knights of the Round Table. It was incredibly silly and dumb. Um, the less said about Arthur and the Knights, the better. <laughs> They, the NFL did a couple of cartoons on the Cartoon Network and some other stuff. Um, baseball um, was shown up in a number of um, other shows and even a Scooby-Doo movie. Um, video games pretty much, though, started to take over. The sports as we remember them, other than car racing, has pretty much taken over everything. Um, car racing because everybody watches car racing for the wrecks. Everybody wants to see the wrecks. Um, but... The cartoons for car racing were the last ones to pretty much die out. And now it's all about video games. Okay. Okay. Um, but in 1993, there was a little show that parodied everything known as the Animaniacs. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Started off, ironically, the Animaniacs started off on um, Fox and then switched over to WB. And the first clip is um, a, a good one concerning football. So if you could run that first clip. It's it's a very quick clip. Football. Oops. Got to get you off the screen. So here. There you go. It's, it's my time. time. Today on my time, throwing an imaginary football. The end. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I know a lot of people want to do that to mimes. Yes. You know? Yeah. Yours are mine. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay, Sorry. so I'm going to ask Rose this question. Sure. Rose, what's the most famous poem about baseball? Uh, Casey at the bat, I think. It's Casey at the bat, exactly. Yeah. Now, now Casey at the bat has been done a number of times, okay, on cartoons. Uh, Warner Brothers on the Looney Tunes did a really nice one, a, um, a fairly serious um, – actually, it was Disney that did it. And they did a fairly serious one with the exception of the ending, um, and it was actually pretty good overall. It was the first time I'd ever heard of Casey at the bat. They even used all the – they actually read the um, – read the, the poem itself as the byline. Well, of course, the Animaniacs couldn't leave well enough alone. <laughs> yes. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and run um, the, the Animaniacs version of uh, Casey at Bat. You got it. It wasn't brilliant for the Warner team that day. The championship was almost done with one game left to play. The pilot found our team in something of a blind. Our last time up to bat and we were still one run behind. In the dugout, everybody watched as Coach Bot threw a fit. We're going to lose this game unless somebody gets a hit. And then he spoke those words that make a baseball team afraid. If we don't win this game today, then no one can get in pay. They all jumped up and ran. It was tragic. It was The only way out would be to hit it past the fence. And then the crowd the fans began to shout. They could not leave their luck. When they saw him coming out, they all went running. Those monsters swing could get that ball so hard. Exactly. 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 Then he, and turned he turned and faced the pitcher, pitcher and he signaled, and he signaled let's, let's begin. begin. The pitcher snarled and he ground the ball into his hip. Ralph clutched the bag intensely in a sack and rushed it. He shot a glance, he took a step, to knock that baseball dead. The ball went straight right towards the plate. And beat him in the head. Ralph was the pitcher and he was the pitcher. Ralph was the pitcher and he was the pitcher. Ralph was the pitcher and he was the pitcher. Ralph was the pitcher and he was the pitcher. Ralph was the pitcher and he was the pitcher. Ralph was the pitcher and he was the pitcher. If only they had had a chance, but now it was too late. But then the tiny figures started walking towards the plate. At first the crowd was silent. Then they gave a start of gas. <gasps> it seemed hopeless now to think the game could still be in the grass. They stared and someone shouted, Will you take her? Look at that! For a little wacko warrior was advancing to the back. The bat was kind of heavy and he dragged it on the ground. And some laughter started coming from on top of the pitcher's mind. And he was not the only one. Cause he crossed the plate at home and scored the high and run. 
Blanco tanked his second, then made his win to third. And the cheering of the crowd was like a thing you never heard. Blanco rounded third for home, the game could now be won. But he had to trust the fate of home to score the winning run. The center fielder heaved the ball, the outcome's still in doubt. Wacko had to get there first or else they tear it up. Catcher caught the ball and turned to Wacko to collide. Wacko was hit the third and went into the sky. The turn flew, the rocks came too, and when it all was done, they waited for the dust to clear to see which side had won. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are out. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in the land, cause the umpire said, Here are you! What? You just love a happy ending. <laughs> there you go. Okay, I love you, baby. <laughs> the Animaniac had a really warped sense of humor. Oh, that was awesome. Good job. So, so there you go. This sports for your Saturday morning cartoon, and we hope that you've uh, able to enjoy the sports that the coronavirus has taken away. Oh, uh, that is that is great. Good job, hey, Jerome, on that. Uh, Thank you. I hope everyone enjoyed it. People that are showing up late, shame on you. You do know that we are on at 9 a.m. Uh, we actually had a vote early on with the team here on whether we should push this up an hour, and everyone agreed, no, keep it at 9 uh, for various good reasons, and uh, we will stay at 9 a.m. And I think um, if you guys hang out with us, you'll, you'll, you'll have just as much fun as we have revisiting our youth. I've actually made a decision uh, uh -oh. because it's, it's my turn next week, right? Yes, it is. I made a decision on what I'm doing for next week, and I'm going to announce it right now because if you think about it, I think it's very appropriate for what we're going through, uh, through this, this quarantine, this isolation, this stay-at-home orders that we have all over the country and all over the world, to be exact. Um, since we have been privy to a lot of real American heroes, I'm doing G.I. Joe. <laughs> Good for you. I am doing real American heroes. Didn't, didn't, one, of the, didn't one of the illustrators of the, the that just passed the other day? Uh, I, I, uh, yes. Uh, well, it was illustrated for the figurines, I think. Oh, okay, okay. It was a, a hand painter for the figurines. Now, wait a minute. When you say G.I. Joe, are we talking the 12-inch ones or the, the little tiny ones? I'm talking about the animated ones. <laughs> um, so, and on that, I'm going to be touching on the movie as well as uh, the series. So, all the people or all there the was a movie? characters, if you had any G.I. Joe characters and be ready to talk about your favorite ones. I mean, from Sergeant Slaughter to, <laughs> um, you know, to Mary Jane and, and, and everybody that was G.I. Joe. We're going to do, I'm, we're going to do G.I. Joe next week. Uh, I think that that's a given and we're going to do that. Uh, a lot of people popped in at the end here. Shame on you. And you know, all watch the sand lot. Um, <laughs> how about that? You know, I was thinking of uh, uh, Bad News Bears. You know? Um, I love Bad News Bears. Right, I had to pick up food at Texas. What are you people doing first thing in the morning, for God's sake? You know? Well, obviously, Roadhouse. obviously, Cheryl's not cooking breakfast. What, does Texas Roadhouse have breakfast? Apparently um, so. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. You guys, you get up and you get your food and you rush back home to catch us, and that's pretty cool. I've actually already had my breakfast this morning, um, so you know it's only ten o'clock. But you know where I'm headed for this 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 morning it was the market last week. For some bizarre reason, my market was closed. After the show last week, I went to the market and it was closed. And I'm like, maybe they just ran out of food. I, I didn't <laughs> see that happening, but oh well. Um, I'll find out, hopefully it'll be open. Uh, Sage, Cheryl, Patrick, uh, Terry from Ireland, Linda Ray, Garrett, Dina, uh, Sonia, good God, guys. Uh, thank you, Brady. Hey, buddy boy, um, all you guys that, Pop in on the mornings to watch us. Even uh, Jerome's West Coast friend, 
Um, yeah, um, I want to say hi to Carlisle and um, to Chuck, who joined us from the West Coast also. Oh, good God. Awesome, guy. You know, I have some friends on the West Coast who actually got up this morning. That's great. So now they can head for the beach because it's still <laughs> earlier there, you know, first thing in the morning. I I'll probably be at the beach tomorrow. Um, but, uh, yeah. Hey, look, you know, this is Saturday morning cartoons. And like I say, each and every week, we go back to our youth. Uh, some of us on these screens are older than others. Uh, 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 well, you know, you know that's why Rose. That's why Rose is looking better than the two of us because she is younger. <laughs> She's so pretty. Did you see that comment that Gary put? It, Gary, I did. I think Gary was hitting on her. I don't know what he wants, but okay. <laughs> How are you looking so pretty in the morning? Well, I, I I do have to admit though, she she does pretty up the uh, the show. Ah, she does. I like what she well, was wearing. Thank you. Last week. I don't look. Yeah, you looked great last week, yeah, by Cybercon, the way. For Cybercon, for uh, Cybercon. Uh, I, I, I spiffed up a little for Cybercon. Yeah, was I a, had to put on dark glasses because that freaking dress you had on was glittering all through it, the screen. Yeah, that was my, yeah, that was my show. So I was <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's going to the prom. She's going to oh, it was a prom. Oh, oh. boy, she's going to kiss the boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think she kissed more. I think she did more than kiss the boy. I think so too. It ought to be a crime. You know, she should have got married first. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So um. So sports was fun. Um. I tell you, this was a hard one to research. I, I'm sure it was. I yeah. Mean, you know. did good uh, research on it. You guys. It was a great have, show, Jerome. Both yeah. of you guys do more background information uh, than I do. Usually, I go off the top of my head, but. <laughs> Um, G.I. Joe, I, I, I literally, there's so many characters in G.I. Joe, I'm, I'm going to have to really uh, do a little work. But what yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Cheryl says here, think about that, a drive through. Wow. Oh, wow. Cool. Wow. Wow. Where is that? How do you do that? Where does Cheryl live? <laughs> Just throw the watermelon in the back. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> where, where does Cheryl live? Does anybody uh, know? Um, uh, <laughs> Cheryl, I like your thinking. It's gonna wait a couple couple of seconds before we get an answer, but um, steak uh, and eggs, mm, yummy, mm, yummy. Mm, yeah, I had eggs this morning too. Um, oh, I picked that one already. Pretty cool. Um, we'll see with Cheryl. I forgot with Cheryl. I thought she was in Maryland, but I'm not sure. Um, we'll see. But uh, yeah, this was a great segment on sport. Uh, you know, I missed, I missed, I missed the bowling completely. I, I mean, Fred, Fred does the best bowling of all time. And we and, can uh, revisit because this is definitely has room room for. Oh coffee. yeah, wrestling. I just saw wrestling, and I, I got a couple of wrestling ones I could do. Right, Cheryl lives in my town. She lives okay, where, where I was born and raised uh, in Baltimore. But uh, yeah, so this was great. Wacky races being one of my favorite cartoons and, and uh, of all time, really is speed races. Well, I mean, we had some really cool cartoons, man, back when we were growing up. Yes, we did. And the kids. Well, today, what, what, this is perfect for them to have cartoons now, you know? Well, the, the, the thing that I've noticed is, um, and, 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 and we've talked about this briefly in the other shows, is that I think the quality of the art was better back then than it is today. Good question. Look at this. All right. So we look at your Hot Wheels. Okay. It looked like they contemplated a little bit more. Well, not, not too much on detail, but when you get close-ups, I guess. And then yeah. you look at Harlem Globetrotters. You know, I, I, I think back in the 60s, they really concentrated a lot on the quality of the art. You know, if you look at Johnny Quest, uh, even even uh, Bugs Bunny and all the Warner Brothers and Looney Tune characters, man, even though they were animals and they were mm -hmm. exaggerated animals, still they concentrated a lot on the movement, uh, you know, from speaking to walking to running. And um, yeah, it's... it's uh, there's been some uh, great cartoons, but you look at um, what you see on, uh, I can't, what? Uh, what is that? Uh, Rick and Morty? Yeah. Is that right? Rick and Morty animation, some of the other animations. Really Gravity cool. Falls. Oh, my God. It's like, look at this crap. Now, now, and I'm, I'm, now that's not to say that there's not some unique um, innovations. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I am a fan of Samurai Jack and the oh, way they did here. that art. Good point. Good point. Because if you look at if you look at Samurai Jack and look at like bugs here, okay. You know, you look, then I put those in a category of art. Okay? Yes. And yes. That's what they were. But you're right. Okay. So let me let me explain about Samurai Jack for those who don't know. If you could um, put up like bugs again, please, um, Mark, or any of these, just pause them. Okay. There. Uh -huh. Whoops. If you look at bugs carefully, bugs has an outline. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you know, you see that. Samurai Jack, no outlines whatsoever. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. And that's why it looks so different is, is you're, you're, you're trained for years to see outlines. Yes. And then Samurai Jack had no outlines. So that's why I considered it art. And the rest of the stuff, I just, you know, I just did not. That's why I can't get into modern cartoons lately is well, the, uh, the and art. Also, and I also look for shadow lines, okay? Johnny Quest focused a lot on shadow. Yeah. It, it made it more realistic that way. It's like, okay, look, they're, they're all casting. Scooby people. had the same thing. You had shadows showing up everywhere. Yeah. Yep. So there were a lot of, here's single line artwork you got there. Um, you know, and, and I understand how long it takes to draw just one minute or even one, you know, yeah, mm -hmm. one minute of film. Uh, I, I get that and try to be consistent. You know, like you can literally see this kind of uh, artwork done on this. Terry just made a point here about something else. And I've been watching the free episodes of Jay on Hasbro's YouTube channel. Yep. Oh. Yep. They've been running. They've been running free episodes during the entire coronavirus. Hey, yeah. Issue. I remember them announcing that. Now that I think about it, I'm going to have to. I remember, Terry, if you remember not how many seasons there were, because I don't. Um, there were, I don't know if they did the same as Transformers, where they renditioned them into like Beast Wars and, and things of that nature. I don't know what they did with G.I. Joe. But I remember they traded out characters. Like Sergeant Slaughter wasn't an original Joe. You know, no, I think it was second it was, season, right? It was two seasons. It was ninety-five episodes. Ninety-five wow. episodes, and only two seasons. Yep, that's remember. Right. Remember, GI yeah. Joe was syndicated. Right. Typically, it's a twenty-six, twenty-two episode season. GI Joe, well, you know, kind of did a third four. Yeah, but with syndication, okay, you had to do. Um, you had to do a lot more episodes than what was tradition. Got it. Okay. All right, guys. Hey, look. Uh, once again, Saturday morning cartoons, and uh, we're about to end this show. Thank you, guys, everyone, for joining us. Our regulars, uh, new people, if you're out there, come back, and let's talk about G.I. Joe next week. Uh, then it's going to be Rose's turn. I have no idea what she's got coming up. Um, can you reveal anything to us, Rosie, of what your ideas might be? Not definite, but maybe. <laughs> Um, I've got a couple of things I'm thinking about. I, I don't have anything solid yet. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and if any of our cartoon crew people or any of our viewers have any ideas, anything they want to see. Yeah, we'd love to love your suggestions. You know, we, we may have already done shows on those, but there's always part twos and parts threes because we can never do it as an entire season of any show. My God, how many times have we done Scooby-Doo? You know, <laughs> it's, it's, At least three that I've counted. <laughs> you know, it's that much information that's out there to share with you guys. So five to six episodic stories. Wow. I gotcha. Okay. Wow. That's true. They did. If you joined in late, because what they would do, well, we'll, we'll talk about it next week. Yeah. Yeah. I, I might open up the show with the, uh, the music to the, the, the uh, soundtrack to the movie. I really like that. Oh, do you know how it goes? Remember how it goes, right? Oh no, I was I was thinking you were gonna open up the show with the uh, with the theme for the cartoon show. Oh, it's gonna be in it. Don't don't oh please. Uh -huh. you, know, and you cannot do a G.I. Joe show without having Yo Joe somewhere in it. Yeah. We're gonna do that. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Terry, thank you for your backup and everyone else that's watching, Cheryl, our original, Sage, Garrett, all you guys that watch us every each and every week uh those are my favorite people um that join us each time um we did 76 minutes though we did about 80 minutes or so that's good that's good we did an 80 minute show on here so um good, the watch job. Parties. good job as always drums you're coming you. in loud and clear i like the equipment rose it didn't cut out at once man I think yep. yes are you hot spotting today no i'm not hot spotting we we bought new equipment so it's working out better than it was so that really excellent helped. that really helped we got a solid show here and and uh, all greens on my screen on my counter here so we did a nice broadcast so thank you guys uh for coming up uh what's terry saying here the 80s joe movie was awesome yes it was <laughs> all right guys we're signing off saturday morning cartoons uh i don't have the, the outro up and i'm not gonna do it so hey i saw her hey baby gwen hi gwen stop that <laughs> hi gwen i'll be, I'll be there i'll be there in a minute